Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. And before we get into today's show, I want to just thank everybody for the feedback that you gave me. We had some pretty high profile interview opportunities that came up over the last week. And I asked you guys for your feedback. And to be honest, it was pretty much like 50 50 split. Uh, I've decided we're not going to be doing any more collaborations for a while. And it's not because I want to judge anybody who presented these opportunities, but it's because we're all on different paths, aren't we? And even as bad as I want to grow this channel to reach many, many more people, there's a dynamic that we have on this channel. We have been through a lot, haven't we? We've had issues with moderators over the past several years, and now we're moderator free on this channel. And I think that that's working out really, really well. People don't like to be babysitted in the chat. And I think that our chat is a testament to the people on this channel because you guys pretty much behave. And we handle anybody who's disrupting the chat. And so I don't want to bring a whole new dynamic onto the channel that might not be aligned with where we're headed. We have to be faithful that God will grow this channel. And... We don't have to do it by going out and trying to get as many interviews as possible, which is the strategy that most channels use to grow their channel. They do a lot of interviews and they, they cross pollinate, I guess you can call it, with other channels and then they gain subscribers. But here's the thing that I do want to say. You know, sometimes I, I get softly rebuked by people and they're like, why are you so hung up on subscribers and growing the channel? Well, I argue that that's exactly what we're supposed to be doing and that Jesus and the disciples main intent was to grow their subscribership to the kingdom of heaven. It would have been really easy for Jesus just to sit in one town with his disciples and say enough is enough. We've got it all covered. Everybody loves me here and we'll just chill here. But instead, he told his disciples to go from town to town and city to city to pick up as many people as possible. To spread the kingdom gospel, to expose the enemy. And to be fishers of men. And so if we're not in a growth mode on this channel, then we're not doing something right. And so where does the burden fall? Well, I'm doing everything that I can. As you guys know, I research and research and research. I spend 60 to 70 hours a week with this channel, posting the information, sharing the gifts of the Holy Spirit, sharing the revelations that have been given to me to share with all of you. But it's no good if it's just the same people hearing the same information over and over. And some of you pick up on that. You're like, Casey, we've got the point. Well, that's exactly the point. If you've got the point, then you need to spread that point to other people who can also get the point. And we should consistently be spreading the kingdom message, exposing the enemy, showing people how they're being deceived, basically doing the things that Jesus did. Now, Jesus could do everything, couldn't he? We ain't no Jesus, but we have a specific gift as one part of the body of Christ, and so we do that. Other parts of the body are good at other things. Some people are gifted with healing, other people with this specific gospel message, just really good at it. Approaching people, you know, in the street or approaching people and sharing the gospel message and people seeing the Holy Spirit going through them with that particular message. And the list goes on and on. Each of us has a gift and we work together. So how do we spread this channel and grow the subscribership? Well, it's up to each and every one of you. I have faith that if every single person watching this right now on all of the other channels that you're subscribed to took the time to mention this channel in other people's comment sections that's how we grow this channel because after people see multiple people mentioning this channel then they're going to come and see what this is all about aren't they and that's exactly how it happened with now you see tv which i do feel like we are mostly aligned with on a spiritual level, same gifting, God-fearing people, don't agree with every single doctrine, but enough to 
make the difference. And in fact, John was saying that he saw many, many people mentioning our channel. So that's how we spread this. So I'm putting a little bit of the responsibility back onto you guys in a loving way, of course, to get this channel out to as many people as possible. I'm doing everything I can and I'll continue to because this is the labor of love that God has given me. Now, those are my words on that. Now let's get into Griswold. We have to call her because <laughs> it's funny. Two, two of the strikes that I've gotten on this channel had this woman in the content of the videos. And so they really don't want you talking about this. Why? Because it, it's, it's embarrassed the legal community. They had a whole book full of people and all they could come up with was these two to prosecute. Both in mysterious situations tight-lipped. We haven't even seen a real picture of Griswold or the stain disappeared mysteriously. Everybody knows it. This should have been the highest profile case. Forget about Depp and Heard. This should have been front and center and everybody should have seen every single second of this trial play out. We should have seen her in a jumpsuit. That would have put the fear of God in anyone thinking they can get away with this. But instead, it's all been subdued and wiped under the rug. And this is what tells me this is all a big psyop. And here she is. They finally sentenced her, if she is in jail to begin with. And she gets 20 years for ruining tens of thousands of years of people's lives. And this is the selective justice that we have in this country, which points to a cover-up. Now, Trump wished her well, didn't he? And I think there's a really good reason for that. I think this woman knew a lot of stuff. Uh, her life was probably threatened. They probably said, you're going to end up like the stain if you say anything. And they probably showed her that they had the power to do that. All it takes. They could have left something in her cell. Like a, like a needle or something. And could have said, well, this, will, this is what will happen to you. And she probably realized the power that they had. And she had to choose life. She knew she was going to hell. So she just took her licks. I mean, this is just a scenario. I don't know if all this is true. But people are like, why didn't she come forward and defend herself with the information she had? Well, because her life was probably threatened. I mean, let's get down to the bottom of it. There are way too many powerful people she could have exposed. And they have the means to get inside and do what they want to do to shut her up. So, 20 years. And she's already served like two or three years. So... With good behavior, she'll probably be out in 8 to 10 years. She'll be in her 70s and be cruising around with her millions. She'll probably write a book and make another several million. And she'll just look at this as a siesta. I'll just rest for a few years. Let this all blow over. And this is what happens. She'll probably go back in for an appeal or get the sentence reduced. This is the starting point. And... I just can't even believe it. Sentence of 240 months is sufficient and no graver than necessary. Wow. Now it's funny because there's comments down here. And the bots are out in full force. Look, she got fined $750,000, which is nothing. They say it's the maximum amount possible under the law. Which is horseradish. But if you go down here. People are saying in the article, they're saying she should have spent the rest of her life in jail. And I agree with that. When you're at the pinnacle at the top of all this, you're the source of this. There's several things at play here. One is, it's just the, the gall of it all. You know, like, oh, I'm rich, so I can do this. And then you have this organized crime element where it's, they're literally, it's like a factory. It's like a meat factory for these people. No telling how many of these girls were thrown out of planes because they threatened to tell. I mean, that would be very easy for them to do. No one would ever know. 
to think that they did not cross the line into murder is just, you're not thinking. So, she apparently addressed the court and said she was sorry for the way that they were feeling, but really never admitted to this. Look at all the comments here. And, of course, the top comments are saying 20 years is appropriate. Of course, they're gonna, the bots are going to say that. Oh, it's appropriate. No, it's not. She, this woman should not have seen the light of day. And this 20-year sentence is probably a victory for her because, like I said, she'll spend half or less than half of that in prison. And by the time that happens, all of us will be long gone or whatever, or have moved on to other things and forgotten about this case. And she'll quietly sneak out of jail. Now, let's jump to other topics here. Now, here's something else I want to address. We've done stories. We I use the Yahoo portal just because that's much my email. So it's really easy to pull up these topics. But understand that most of these stories, not this one in particular, this is Yahoo Finance, but most of these stories are pulled from other sources. So don't get it twisted. Don't think, oh, Casey's just using Yahoo. How can you trust them? That's why we read between the headlines. We don't take these people's word, but we read between the headlines. In this case, this story has something to say. Because this is what we were saying. We've been talking about this. Inflation hitting America's middle class particularly hard. Why? Because it's skewed. Middle class people pay a much larger proportion of their budget to just surviving than rich people do. It's simple math. In other words, things like gas prices, electric bill, and supplies, and food costs affect us disproportionately because it chews up our disposable income, which as it stands is not very much to begin with. Most people, after they pay their bills and go grocery shopping, have barely any disposable income at all. So then when things like, I need to get my car repaired, or somebody gets sick, or the infinite list of other things that go wrong in life happen, there's no way to pay for it. So immediately, many of these Americans just go straight into debt. Now, people can argue, oh, that's people's fault. They shouldn't be living beyond their means. Well, living be, living within your means, can, most of the time, for many middle class Americans, means that you're living in an unsafe area where your cars are getting their windows smashed in, in very unsafe living conditions, as the level of living has gone down significantly. I, I can't I can't believe what some landlords get away with, what they are able to rent out at the prices that they do for these slums. But basically, that's what most middle class Americans are dealing with. It's a shell game. Yes, you can live within your means, but where do you want to live? Where are your kids going to go to school? These are all choices you have to make. And a lot of people sacrifice for that. But then they're living paycheck to paycheck, waiting for the next financial crisis to occur in their life. Let's read a little bit about this. Whether in retail stores or at the pump, consumers across all income levels are paying high prices for goods and services. The latest consumer price index showed that the inflation surge of 8.6% in May, the highest level since 1981, but higher prices aren't impacting consumers equally. Now, it's interesting because the mainstream media is running cover for Trump. You, you would never think that they would be doing this, right? Why won't they blame him for the inflation? They could easily do it. He sent out two of the three stimulus checks on his watch, totaling trillions of dollars. He gave a bunch of that money back to the corporations. Yeah, we got some of it. But that was what kicked off this whole thing. And then the shutdown of the American economy, that 
contributed to the inflation. And yes, Bo Driving is continuing the trend with his third stimulus. I think he passed one stimulus. The economy did open back up, but the damage was already done. The damage was already done. And so now you see that the media is right in there with everybody else playing this game to push the pawns that they want to push. They could easily call Trump out on this and say, you know, you ain't so great with your low gas prices because of the way you handled the spamdemic. But they won't do that because they wanted him to handle the spamdemic that way. He did exactly what they wanted him to do. Now, both sides work together. This is what I've always told you guys, right left paradigm. Now, it's not popular to say that, obviously. If I wanted to be one of the popular channels, I would pick a side, right? But obviously, we don't do that here. Because we see through in between the headlines, we see through in between their agenda. So, look at this. Average income of 78 grand, that's a lot of money. As of 2020, faced an inflation impact of 9.4% compared to 8.9% for higher income households. So, Middle class is hurting the most because of their greater wallet share, they're calling this, in two main industries, motor fuel and automobiles. So, fuel, automobiles, and there's so much more. So much more of what middle class people spend is going up in price. And again, it's the ratio of your spending. Very rich people can pull back in areas in their investments or whatever without impacting their daily life. And that's what this is about. Where you live, how much you have to pay for gas, how much you have to pay for groceries and all these things, and what proportion of your budget that's taken up by. Now let's move on here. It's our next story. As Kamala Harris warned, Supreme Court may target gray marriage and contraception next. Now this is a scare tactic to ignite the left, obviously. Or you could look at it this way. No hide laws, right? Who knows? I mean, they could play this about half a dozen different ways, couldn't they? But she's telling the left, you better watch out because they're now coming for gray marriage and contraception. And if you think the pain is happening now, you just wait until they're done. So obviously this is a scare tactic. Kamala Harris warned money that other established rights, such as same sex marriage and access to contraceptive, could come under assault by the Supreme Court next, following the High Court's decision Friday to overturn Roe v. Wade. I definitely believe this is not over. Unbelievable. Now, you would think that, <laughs> look, This gay marriage thing, maybe, that would be actually a good thing because as far as I'm concerned, marriage has a specific definition in the Bible, doesn't it? Contraception, I'm not so sure about. I think that most, I mean, I don't, I don't like contraception because it's hormones in a woman's body, but there's other forms of contraception. Like condoms that are perfectly fine. So, she's just blowing steam, and obviously none of this is really going to happen, but she wants you to believe that it will. Now, here's our last story today. A subscriber sent this to me. This is a little bit creepy. This is some kind of concert poster by a band called My Chemical Romance. Now, here's the band here from Newark, New Jersey. And here's the concert poster. This was from 2006. And I counted the number of streams of rain falling down under this umbrella. And there are 16. 16 years later puts us in 2022. So this is happening now. Now look at this. 
My chemical romance. Well, that's America and the pharmaceutical industry. We have a romance with chemicals, don't we? And here it's depicted as the rain falling on the umbrella, which of course is the syringe. And this woman pieced together like some kind of Frankenstein zombie. It's a search for a cure photo finish records showcase. So I looked up this shirts for a cure and they do t-shirts to promote finding cures for different diseases, which makes this even more cryptic, doesn't it? We've talked about zombies a lot and how this fits into the smack the nation. Look at this. Sorentha.org, like syringe. Whoa. And, of course, the umbrella feral tip. The tip of the spear. The serpent in the chest. Now, I didn't count every single raindrop on this poster, but there are 16 across. And again, 16 plus 2006 is 2022. It's happening right now. So, I don't know if there's anything else to look at on this poster, but thanks to the subscriber that sent this to me. We have the pink under the umbrella. Of course, that's a Crino Drome. And so everything has meaning, doesn't it? I love each and every one of you. Tomorrow we'll have a re-upload of a past video, a very powerful video that was not seen by a lot of people. And so hopefully you guys tune in for that at the exact same time. The video is about eclipses during the life of Jesus Christ. And we found something pretty amazing when we looked at the number of years that he was on this planet and the eclipses that had occurred over Jerusalem during his life. So we'll take a look at that tomorrow. I love each and every one of you. Take care and be safe, you guys.